Wake up, sleepy boy. The sun is sinking down. You gotta keep moving right through this town. But something got a hold of me, and I can't describe. I'm a victim of love. Come put your arms around me and hold me tight. I just can't believe you. You don't seem right, but every time I see you, my heart don't hide. I'm a victim of love on the northern side. Hi. So today I'm in Cicero, Indiana, which is about, I guess, about a half hour from Indianapolis, north. Tiny little cemetery, as you can see. It's really small. I never know what when I'm. I, I never know what size the cemetery is going to be, unless it's like one of the Los Angeles ones. I know they're always going to be big, but when I'm in a small town, it could be a big one, it could be a small one. This is a particularly small one, but the grave I'm looking for hasn't been easy to find. I'm still looking for it, which is usually the case. And I'm going to keep looking for it until I find it, because I don't give up ever when it comes to something like this. Something that's important to me. And I hope important to other people. So I'm gonna keep looking. And I found it. Right, it took a while. I'm looking at other graves though and with the pictures on it. Some of these people that seems to be a lot of soldiers in the cemetery, and there seems to be a fair amount of young people, which breaks my heart every time I see it. And pictures on the grave is always it's a sweet tribute, but it's difficult to see, even if you don't know the person. I don't know these two girls, the sisters died very young, both of them, 18 and 28. Ah, gosh. But the grave I'm looking for is right over here. I'm gonna show you right now. If you're not familiar with Ryan, Ryan White, that's okay. Uh, it's been a long time since he passed away, 28 years, April 8th, 1990. He was 18 then. Ryan White was born December 6, 1971. Ryan White was born a, a hemophiliac. So his blood couldn't clot, so he could bleed to death very easily. That's a, my, the, what I know about hemophiliacs. And at 13, he had a blood transfusion. And they like, I guess, I'm not, I don't know exactly how all this works, but they mixed the plasma of a bunch of, you know, blood donors. And back then they didn't screen properly for the HIV AIDS virus. Ryan White contracted AIDS, I think around the age of 13. And from there he became sort of this 
well, a bit of an outcast and then a hero. Ryan White and his parents fought for him to go to school with his classmates, but they didn't want him at that high school. This was a scary time, right? I mean, AIDS was in its infancy somewhat. So the people, did, people were afraid for their children, for themselves. And he just wanted to be a normal kid and be with his friends and his peers. But the bigger school board decided he could. He could go to school. But then the smaller school board, I, I'm not sure how that all works, said no. They wouldn't let him in their high school. Finally, he was allowed, but he ate lunch alone. He was ostracized from fellow students. He was made fun of, bullied. It's, if not living with a terminal disease like that at the time when AIDS was t considered terminal, I mean, all of that to go through for a little kid. There's a definition of hero in the dictionary, and I argued about this with a guy once on Twitter, and it, he was really getting to me, and I don't get into Twitter arguments or anymore or anything like that. It's just something, I forget how it started, but I, was, I said something about all, all soldiers are heroes. And he said, no, no, no. And I said, all cops are heroes. And I said, all firemen are heroes. And he goes, no, the definition of a hero is you have to perform a heroic act. I said, well, who, what defines a heroic act? He goes, just showing up for work doesn't mean you're a hero. Yeah, for some professions it does. Just showing up for work does mean you're a hero. And just showing up for school and fighting for what you believe in and wanting to be with other people in society when they don't want you there, when you should be there, that's a hero. And that's Ryan White. He became national, national news. Now, I, I was young, I don't remember much. I, I can recall hearing about it. I remember there was a TV movie made about it. I can't even remember if I saw it. But Ryan White became great friends with Elton John, Michael Jackson, and just, he was, he was on the cover of People Magazine, his story, and became quite famous. As you can see, there's a picture of him here. Just a little kid. Kid of Courage, Ryan White. And a quote from Elton John, turn me loose from your hands, let me fly to distant lands, fly away sky, lion pigeon fly, from all the things you left so very far behind. Love Elton John. And I'm not sure what song that's from. I know what song this is from. It's a Michael Jackson quote. Gonna make a difference, gonna make it right. Friends forever, Michael Jackson. This man in the mirror. And as you can see, his grave is still quite tended to nicely. People come out here. They leave things. And this really kind of got to me when I saw the dog. Stone dog here. I just thought that was really sweet. I don't know if that's representative of Ryan's dog that he had. But watching over him. Patience, tolerance, faith, love, forgiveness, wisdom, spirit. As I try to do, I brought something to leave. A few other people have left some rocks here. That's my tradition. I'm convinced he suffered no pain at the end, Dr. Martin Kleiman. He was a young man who taught us the meaning of courage and I'm convinced that his life will be remembered more for what he taught us about living than the disease that afflicted him, Governor Evan Bay. Your candle burned out long before your legend ever did, Elton John, that's candle in the wind. We're sure going to miss you, Ryan, family and friends. Monument donated by Matt Frewer. Now, is that Matt Frewer? 
who played Max Hedrum, the actor. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. A place where no one is afraid to hug. Tribute to Ryan. God gave us Ryan on December 6, 1971. He was born with an affliction called hemophilia. In December of 1984, Ryan was diagnosed with a little understood disease called AIDS. Ryan's struggle to live like an ordinary kid became more intense because he wanted to go to school. There was not a person who knew Ryan that could ever hate him, Reverend Bud Probasco. The children began to ask Ryan, are you afraid to die? Ryan responded, if I die, I know I'm going to a better place. Ryan White fell asleep and woke up in his heavenly home on Palm Sunday, April 8th, 1990. Eventually, his family moved here to Cicero. Cicero? Cicero, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. And the local high school did allow him to go to school here. And I believe he was about a month short, or two months short, well, a month short of graduating when he passed away. There's something about Ryan right here, too. on the back of Dale Miller's grave. Our, help, our heartfelt appreciation to Dale Miller for his generous support of the Ryan White Scholarship Fund, Hamilton Heights High School. That's beautiful. So the gentleman buried right here did something in, in regards to Ryan White with the scholarship, I guess started the Ryan White Scholarship Fund, I'm not sure. Peace to you, Dale Miller, for doing some good work. I would definitely suggest reading up on Ryan's story. I'm sure it can be told a lot better than I just did. There's more to it. He can go into more depth. So I definitely encourage you to read more about it. I'm going, I was going mostly by memory of what I, what I knew and what I had read in the past. But I always wanted to see this and always wanted to come out here and pay my respects. And I'm glad I did. And I hope for people who remember the story, people just learning the story, can through this video. That's why I do it, is when I come out to graves. So people that can't get out here can. Okay, so there it is behind me. Cicero Cemetery. Yeah. I'm looking around and there's a few people that come out here and do the Jewish tradition of leaving rocks and lots of American flags, lots of flowers. It's a dreary sort of day, but there's also blue in the sky at certain parts. It's kind of odd. It looks like it's going to start pouring rain, but it hasn't all day. But there's always a little bit of blue in the skies over Indiana. I've noticed that. Been here for a bit now. Always that little bit of blue. And you always got to look for that little bit of blue. Right? Okay. I'm going somewhere else. Peace out. Peace to Ryan White. Peace to you and yours.